What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube and aren't subscribed, make sure and click the subscribe button, like, comment. Let us know what you think about the episode. If there's any particular guests or topics you'd like to have on, we always love to see your guys' feedback on YouTube and then be able to incorporate it into future episodes. Today, I'm going to be joined by USA Diesel, and we're going to be talking about one thing a lot of you guys have told me with newer diesel trucks that can make you hesitate to buy them or is just a worry if you own one, and that's the DP getting clogged or the soot load when you're idling the truck. So if it's cold outside or maybe you're on a job site and they have a really interesting solution for it. So I wanted to chat with them about that. Also their company, talk about six liters, some six liter stuff as well. So definitely looking forward to our conversation today. Before we get to it though, I want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, which is Kershaw Knives. They've got a promo code just for you guys that you can use on their website. If you go to kershaw.kaiusa.com, use code 2024diesel40. So you get 40% off MSRP. They've got a ton of different knives. So if you need something for hunting, fishing, EDC around the job site, they've definitely got you covered. So head on over to their website, use that code, take advantage, get some really cool gear, and save some money along the way. All right, let's get to today's podcast with USA Diesel, talking about soot load when you're idling a truck and also some power stroke stuff and some other projects that they're working on. Ed, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today about some really cool products that that uh, you guys have and then also learning more about you and your companies there's a lot of really cool things when we were chatting before that i know our audience is going to want to hear so i look forward to our chat today and learning more about what you do and your passion for diesel and helping keep trucks on the road absolutely we're all about that thanks for having us i kind of i wanted to start a little bit with the background because i have seen FickhamRepair.com. I have seen USA Diesel on Instagram, and I want to make sure all of our listeners, whether they've been around diesel forever or maybe that they're new to owning a diesel truck, that they know a little bit about you, your company, um, companies, and and what you guys focus on. Absolutely, yeah. We got started uh, back in 2010 uh, with Fickham Repair. Uh, we got into that as a result of my fuel injection control module on my power stroke six liter dying. And I'm like, Ford, you want how many dollars exactly for the small piece of nothing? You want 1200 <laughs> bucks? Sweet Jesus money. And so I, uh, you know, I successfully took mine apart and fixed it as the geek and nerd that I am and car guy, uh, extraordinary. Well, I don't know about all that, but anyway, <laughs> and, um, then I posted on, uh, there's a great website, FTE, they call it, Ford Truck Enthusiast, so otherwise known as Ford-Trucks.com. Give those guys a shout out. But the, I was a member there, and I'm like, hey, guys, if you know, just in case you're thinking that the only option for, for repairing your FICM is to send it off to, to the Ford uh, dealership, recognize that's just not the case. Uh, you can... You can uh, you can carve at this thing yourself. And then, you know, somebody sent me a, a private message saying, Hey man, could you fix mine? I'm like, sure. Second guy. Hey, can you fix mine? Sure. Third guy. Hey, can you fix mine? Yeah. That'd be a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> One thing led to another. I don't even know where tens of thousands of these have been repaired by now. So now we're, we're into thick and repair. We're into ECM, TCM repair, instrument cluster repair. Basically if it's a module on your, on your truck, we got you. And, uh, and then not everyone is necessarily, well, I'd say the best at diagnosing their stuff. And so a key differentiator for us is someone calls and says, Hey man, I need to fix them. Like we don't, we don't go into what kind of fix them can we sell you? We get, we get into it. So what's the truck doing to make you think you need one of these bad boys and you know, come to find out, man, you need a freaking high pressure oil pump. You need a dummy plug or a standpipe or whatever. Let, let's hook you up with what you need. Not with what you think you need. And uh, that's what's um, so, yeah, yeah. one thing led to another. And I was about 16 million products. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> well, that's what's so cool about how the aftermarket has embraced and then offered solutions for diesel truck owners. Like the story you mentioned, I, I've, I've heard that a lot and I experienced it myself way back when I got into them was I had an issue. I needed a fix. The dealership had this you know crazy price on something and I started to see you know, somebody came up with a solution and how that has progressed from like 2010 into 2023, I'm sure there's been a lot of growth, a lot of opportunity and gosh, especially with diesel trucks, like there's, we had chatted you know, before about six liters. They're still popular, maybe even more popular now than they used to be. I don't know, but it's, they don't have a shelf life and, and there's no. so many platforms that need help. 
Well, yeah, I mean, you know, guys are constantly surprised that they pop the heads off their 6.0 when they still see the hatch marks on their cylinder walls at a quarter million miles. I'm like, well, yeah, that's because of the high pressure oil system that you're griping about. Uh, it prevents the truck from having the possibility of igniting without 500 PSI of oil pressure. So you have a fully lubricated bottom end before it ever goes kaboom. And of course, your, your motor's going to last longer. And so people start adding, adding thing, these things up and they're like, holy crap, this is this motor's ridiculous. And yeah, it's ridiculously awesome, but you got to take care of it. Yeah. I I definitely want to learn more about the process of your, of your company growing, but there was a product I saw and, and uh, we had talked a little bit about it. I wanted to go into more detail Um, because one of the topics we cover a lot on the diesel podcast is the newer trucks with emission systems and some of the challenges that they have with maintenance, longevity, um, I find a lot of the enthusiasts, maybe our listeners, they're very in tune and they're looking for information or ways they can prevent bigger issues with their truck. So I wanted to learn more about this product that you have, where the idea came from, what it does, and then what trucks it it applies to currently, and then maybe some other ones you guys are looking at uh, offering it for in the future. Absolutely. So what we're talking about here, and for those that are watching on YouTube or whatever, throw the little thing in, you can see a fun picture of it here. (laughs) But basically, this is a liquid heat generator. And this is a reason I know that God loves you and wants you to be happy, in case you're wondering. (laughs) Um, This bad boy, it's just uh, just serpentine belt driven. uh, And everything you need to install this comes in the kit. But it's serpentine belt driven. This thing generates uh, 10 times the heat of your plug-in space heater. So your plug-in space heater in your living room or whatever, that generates 5,000 BTUs. This bad boy generates 50,000 BTUs. So it'll take your uh, your truck from, from zero degrees to operating temperature in like six, six and a half minutes. And you'll uh-huh. have heat out of your vents in like two minutes. And so no more waiting 15, 20 minutes for your truck to warm up. No more all the gunk and crap with wet stacking inside the engine. You don't have any of that. Uh, obviously, you're not wasting the fuel because diesels like to run hot. They don't like to run cold. And so the fuel efficiency is absolutely increased. And if all of that's not enough, so, you know, warm tootsies, happy ha- happy passenger, probably your wife or girl, whatever, you know, uh, being warmer, faster, um, all that aside, uh, the actual financial benefits to you in real dollars that you can feel right now is twofold. One, you're not going to spend nearly as much on diesel exhaust fluid because your need to go into regen is going to be ridiculously diminished as a result of the fact that your diesel particulate filter has nothing to filter. So your DPF starts starts getting uh, engaged when it starts has, having something to filter when, you're, when your diesel's running inefficiently. So if we can get this thing up to operating temperature faster and then keep it there, then our DPF is going to be cleaner longer. And so we're not going to have to go into regen near as often. And so this, this 80 to 120,000 mile on average looming death sentence of, you know, five, six, seven thousand $7,000, whatever it is to change out your after treatment systems, uh, that goes away. And so it gets pushed way downfield because what this thing does, it's, it's, uh, pick it up again here. It's clutch controlled just in exactly like your AC compressor is. So it's got its own ECM. So the vehicle's got no idea that this thing's even here. As a result, there's no warranty issues to worry about. You're not going to void your factory's warranty, nothing like that. It's about a three hour install, by the way. But the uh, it's got a little port on here for, for, hey, what's my coolant temperature? And so the way that it works, there's an any and there's an any and an Audi. So your heater hoses come, come in through here. And what happens is it, it heats up your coolant um, when it needs to, and then it cuts out when it doesn't need to. So when it doesn't, when when the, when you're at operating temperature, this clutch kicks out, and now it's just an idler pulley, and uh, you've got your twelve thousand pound trailer behind you. You're going down the road, no no harm, no foul, and uh, yeah, this thing is just idling at that point. It's it's just spinning. But then you get to the job site and you drop it in park, and you're you're taking care of business with the heat on or the AC on. Summer and winter too doesn't matter. Your your motor is not staying at operating temperature, um, just sitting there idling, even though it used to be at operating temperature. And so the clutch kicks in again and says, "Uh uh-uh, we can't have any of that. And so it goes ahead and it maintains that operating temperature, thereby giving your uh, motor something to do, about a five horsepower load against the motor and um, keeping your engine at at, at temperature. So it's just better 
every way you look at it. There is no drawback. That's one of the, the things I think that for me personally has scared me so much about newer trucks in the climate that I live in. It gets cold for four months out of the year, five months out of the year. Yep. And I love the technology in them. I love the power. I love the torque. There's so many options, but I've also owned older diesels and I know how long I would have to idle them to get up to temperature when it's 10 degrees, zero degrees, minus five. It takes forever. It and my mind would automatically go to, okay, I've got an EGR, a DPF. I've got to wait. Even if I plug it in, that's still going to take some time, you know, overnight to warm up. And I just, it, in the back of my mind, I think, how much am I loading the DPF? How much am I diminishing its life? And there was never a solution ever until we started talking about this, this product. And I thought, okay, this, this opens up the doors to what I would own, purchase and be comfortable with. Well, Yes, because a lot of like our fleet customers, as an example, I mean, they're they're making the move away from diesel because of the concerns about maintenance costs. I've got an, uh, an airport that we're working with. They had um, a, a Cummins six seven that they took it apart, and it was just totally gunked up. They actually threw a rod. They needed a whole a whole new engine, but it was all caused by the wet stacking that this motor was subject to in airport operations. So they got a thirty seven thousand dollar bill for a new engine, and it was totally avoidable. So. So, um, cause that was, it was on a fuel truck application, but there's thousands of different applications like this where folks are using their, their diesel trucks as grocery getters, or even if they're working them, which is the number one way to make your engine last, you know, longer, even if, even if they're working them, you still have that warm up time and you still have that idling time. And so, yeah, if you live in Fargo, North Dakota, there's no question about it. You want this product, but even if you live in Miami, um, you still want this product cause you're, you're, the, the same rules apply. You're still not getting to operating temperature fast enough. You're still not staying at operating temperature and you're still ending up with a DPF that needs to be changed out. You're still spending way more money on DEF than you need to. And you're still um, wasting fuel and you're still gunking up the inside of your motor just to tell me, ticking time bomb away. Now in the airport example, that's an incredibly egregious application, right? It's not typical. But, you know, if you're a carpenter, you're a plumber, you're a masonry guy, you know, you paying sheetrock, whatever, um, and you're you're using your truck for how it's supposed to be used, this is still about an every 80 to 120,000 mile adventure for you. And you're just like, God, that's a whole lot of money. And, you know, we tell our customers for years and years, like, our goal is not to sell you stuff, it's to tell you stuff. And it's like, man, you know, do, do you want to buy this thing or, or do you want to have the, have this other repercussion? I mean, you, you, know, you decide there's no right answers except for the right answer that is for you. But, but yes, a tremendous number of fleet customers, we have talked about that, I got sidetracked, squirrel, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, they've switched over to gas, even though it's got less torque, even though it's got less fuel economy because of the maintenance cost differences. But this evens that playing field and allows you to have all of the torque and all of the, all of the benefits of diesel while materially pulling back from, from the risk that used to exist without this product. That was, that was the other big thing that would jump out to me as well. You mentioned that 80 to 120,000 mile range is i think owning a diesel truck let's say if we take one of the older ones a six liter five nine and lb7 something like that <clears throat> we went into that purchase and we knew hey i'm probably gonna have to do some stuff eventually but maybe i can time it maybe um maybe i do plan on a little bit more power i'll build the transmission first you could sort of approach it in a I say a more comfortable way when you were ready to upgrade first now you think I'm just driving this truck normally, however I use it. And in, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I've got this five, six, however many thousands of dollar product or, you know, D DPF that I'm going to need. Can I even get it now? Is there a back order? How does that work? And so I found a lot of our listeners are definitely more proactive with wanting to learn and approach their maintenance different so that they can make them last longer. And I think this, this addresses something I, like I said, I've never heard about. Um, I've never heard of a way to be able to get up to operating temperature faster. So I'm not creating that soot load, or I guess I can eliminate some of that inefficiency that the truck's just going to have based on it's a diesel engine and it's colder outside, or I'm not up to operating temperature. 
Well, 100 percent. And it's not like the OEMs have come up with an answer here. I mean, the closest that they've gotten, which doesn't address the problem at all, uh, is just auxiliary heaters that provide you heat in the cab faster. But that's not getting your engine up to temperature faster. And so uh, and then the other guys are like, well, you know, forget this noise. I'm just going to go ahead. and I'm going to delete my truck. You know, not that I want to violate federal law, but I feel like there's no choice but to violate federal law. And it's like, well, let's talk about that. So you're going to delete your truck. What's going to happen? Number one, if you do it or the shop that does it, if you get caught, I mean, the EPA, uh, they will come down on you. It hurts. The financial impact of that is real. And, and it's getting to be more and more real. Fewer and fewer shops are even interested in doing a delete. But let's say a fella already or a gal um, is already deleted. They say, hey, I've already solved this problem. I got rid of all that stuff. I, I put my truck on a diet, they say, and I don't need this. Well, listen, you're still having the same issues of potentially wet stacking your engine. You're still having the wasted fuel. You're still having the um, the fact that you're freezing in your cab for 15, 20 minutes before you can go with all the time, time wasting and everything else. So even even if somebody has deleted their truck already, they still want this product. But for all those people that thought that their only option was to delete their truck to avoid these issues, now they can be like, okay, yes, I can get that newer truck. We've got a litany of customers. You know, Fickham Repair started, like we said, you know, in back in 2010, just doing Fickhams. And now we've kind of grown to, a, you know, we rep for everybody in the space. I can't think of the company we don't rep for. So we're kind of like a one-stop shop, all parts diesel place. So if you can afford Chevy and Dodge, we got you. But a tremendous number of our customers, they're 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 driving the 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 five nine Cummins or the Power Strokes seven three or six zero because they like I don't want to deal with the crap. I like the looks of the newer trucks, but my I I like the reliability of the older stuff. Um, the and because I don't have to worry about my DPF, I don't have to worry about diesel exhaust fluid, I don't have to worry about any of this any of this stuff. And it's like, well, hold on a second. Did you know that there's an option? You could have your cake and eat it too here. And uh, yeah, it's it's astounding. That's the that's the big uh, quandary, so to speak. That uh, I think I've definitely thought about too. It's always been a trade off because I think I love five nines. I love older Duramax trucks. I never I never owned okay. a Power Stroke like a seven three or six liter, but I loved them. But if I go back to the interior on a 2007 five nine, and I look at a 2023 Ram, or you know, uh, an <laughs> 01 so Derm, <laughs> yeah, and just all the things that are there, it's like I love the new ones. They're so comfortable. They're quiet. There's so many, so much technology in it. So I think a product like this addresses, uh, you know, a major issue. I know one of the questions a listener is going to have is, what trucks does it fit? And so I wanted to ask you that. Like currently, what trucks can you use it on? Well, it's a, it's an interesting question because this is completely it stands separate from the engine. The the I mean it's bolted up to the engine, but no part of the engine's computer uh, system knows that it's there, right? Because this has got its own ECM. All all you have is if you have uh, like you know here's the bracket for a for a, a Power Stroke six seven as an example. So it's just a question of the bracketry that's needed to to get this to go. So today we've got brackets built for 2017 and newer uh, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge diesel applications. So if you've got a, a 17 or newer Power Stroke or, or, or Cummins or, or Duramax, we got you. We have existing brackets. They work. You can order it off of uh, off of our website today. You can go to usadiesel.com and boom, there it is. It'll take you right to the product page um, of, of this. But if you've got what we're doing is we're developing a list. And so if you've got an older, uh, you say, say you've got a 7.3. Well, we don't have the brackets built for a 7.3 yet. But all of all these commercials that exist for the already deleted trucks, they exist for these pre-emissions after treatment system trucks as well. And so if we have enough interest in going ahead and developing the bracketry for that 5.9 or whatever it is, um, by all means, yeah. Uh, we'll build the bracketry for that too and we can put you on a wait list and off to the races. That's really cool because I, I think I think of how universal the application is. You, you mentioned it. It's not just a new truck issue. It's also an older one. It's still fuel 100%. costs. It's still being cold in the cab. It's still wasted time that those older ones will have when you're warming up. So I think it's really cool, the design of it, how it operates it has that compatibility to work on a 12 valve, a first gen, a 20, you know, a 2020, whatever year it might be. So I think that's really cool. Well, and you know, and if, uh, you know, 
obviously in the diesel world, especially the propensity to have somebody that says, well, yeah, man, I got access to a CNC machine. I'll build my own bracket. Man, more power freaking to you, brother. I'll, you know, we'll sell you the thing. You can build your own build your own setup. And lest your listeners think that this product is new uh, or it's not well vetted, you know, it's like, yeah, we're gonna, we're trying this out on you. No, uh, there's a you know, uh, there's some generator companies that have that have installed this product as a native OE part of their uh, generator uh, gen sets from the get go, and they've been doing that for years. And so this is tried and true. It works, period. And because it is um, not tied to anything, if you've got an excavator running a, a Zuzu inline six, and man, you you're freezing your tush off, you know, waiting for your uh, old excavator to, to warm up. It's the exact same conversation, just rinse and repeat. How does the uh, as far as the install? Is it something like how do how does it how does it work? Or can you walk me through just some basics of how I would install this on my truck? Absolutely, yeah. The uh, it's about a three hours uh, three hours of your life episode to to, to install. Uh, it comes with uh, some idler pulleys that you're going to need. It comes with a longer serpentine belt. It's engine specific. So, say you do have like a a, a 2019 Cummins six seven as an example. It comes with everything that you need in order to um, get that installed. So you're you're pulling off uh, you're pulling off your old serpentine belt. You're uh, you're installing this essentially where the second uh, alternator goes. So if your truck d is set up as a dual alternator setup, you will have to convert it to a single first. Uh, for now, we're working on that. But for now, that's the case. Um, and you just bolt this to to the front of the block and, uh, you know, r r run the serpentine belt through and off to the races as you go. But full instructions come with it, everything a growing boy needs. And we're publishing some install videos too, just in case it helps somebody. I like that with the install, <clears throat> there's no I don't have to worry about codes. I don't have to worry about a tune. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because <clears throat> people don't want to deal with that anymore. <laughs> like oh, yeah, in the no, er early days, it was okay, but anymore, I don't <laughs> think they want to. Well, people want easy. They want simple. They want, you know, I think Staples had a wonderful, you know, push the easy button. 100%. Yeah. Good job of the marketing person who came up with that. Uh, you know, not my not my forte marketing, but uh, but I do appreciate it very, very much. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this is set it, forget it. It's a one time install and you're done. And because it's not vehicle specific actually if you're going to sell the truck and you're thinking man i might not get my my cash out of this thing again uh current street price on this is 2400 bucks uh cause some people are going to want to know about that probably at some point but the um if they're like man i'm, I'm gonna put this on and i'm not gonna see my money again well recognize you are going to see your money again in fuel you are going to see your money in death you are going to see uh, your money again in, in saved time but then also nothing prevents you from taking this off of this truck that you have now and putting it in the next one so if you're a guy who trades in his truck every couple of years man yeah don't buy a second one you know just go ahead and take it off and transfer it on to the next one and off to the races i mean if you can educate the next guy and say man you really freaking want this because they really freaking want this um then great but don't think that it's necessarily that your only option is to make it so that, oh, it's on this truck and this truck only, and it's an investment in this that I might not be hanging on to forever. Yeah, if you're not hanging on to it forever, you can still buy it and have it for now. And when you get the replacement uh, vehicle, pop it in there. That's a really good point because a lot of times if you do upgrades to a truck and you sell it, you're selling the truck with the upgrades or with the things you put on. And you do think that you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to have this on the new one or it won't fit or I got a different year. And <laughs> this being able to be universal, really, besides a bracket and a belt, yep. it'll work. It, it, that's that's a hundred percent correct. It's set it and forget it. You give me twelve volt power for the for the ECM that comes with it, and a, and a serpentine belt that runs across it, and and off to the races we go. And because the uh, because the clutch is uh, it just kicks in when it needs to. I mean, it really is. Once you install it, you are one hundred percent done. I like that. Makes it easy for me. Like that easy button you mentioned. <laughs> like the easy button, hundred <laughs> percent. I wanted to step back for a second because I always I love hearing the stories of companies and the passion for diesel, whether it's with um, a racer I'm talking to or an enthusiast or or a founder of a company. I'm curious, where did your passion for automotive, for racing, for <clears throat> vehicles, specifically for diesel, where did that come from? Well, I started mess messing with engines when I was when I was a wee lad, <laughs> <laughs> and so you know it's been it's been kind of in my blood for 
for, for years. And then, uh, like a lot of your listeners, I imagine, you know, you, you start and you're looking at campers when you have a family, you got a wife and some munchkins and you want to go some places and you're like, man, that little, that little gasser just can't get it done. We need a, we need a family hauler. So it started with the acquisition of a Ford excursion, which has got its own separate set of followings. And so I've got like a half a dozen six liters that I own. My favorite six liters continues to be my excursion. <laughs> that is just a, uh, that, that truck is amazing. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, where else are you going to put your, put, put your vehicle in and, and drive and just get off the, get off the long skinny pedal and, and pull your 12,000 pound camper, have it, you know, start moving without any extra input on the, on the throttle. It's just stupid power. And you feel like, you feel like uh, Tim, the tool man, just a little bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, growing up with nothing. Uh, so, you know, part of our prior conversation, uh, you were telling me about guys you're listening to that, that, uh, that haven't had it the best, and maybe they're still not having it the best. You know, I feel for those guys. Cause I was one of those guys. I grew up in the inner city, uh, bad. I mean, we had the highest per capita murder rate in the nation when I was growing up, it was rough and so you know you grow up with nothing and you, you end up you appreciate everything and so uh you know there wasn't going to be another toy at christmas time if i if i broke this one so you learn how to do it yourself you learn how to fix it yourself you learn how to how to help help your neighbor out who has no idea what they're doing so you well, i mean i try this I, I did that and i you know i learned everything you know pre-youtube i mean youtube is a unbelievable resource anymore well you didn't have that as kids you know we had haynes manuals oh boy <laughs> <laughs> i've seen a few of them <laughs> yeah, just, just a couple. And so, uh, but yeah, you know, I, uh, my, my, my first engine was uh, my first, my first, uh, my first vehicle I bought for a hundred bucks knowing full well it had a blown engine later on found out I had a blown transmission. I, uh, I'd like to think I'm not just a total uh, idiot, but I, I, I am responsible for blowing an additional five engines, <laughs> <laughs> but I learned a ton. I learned so much uh, um, through that experience, and it's it's absolutely amazing. One of my one of my taxis is it's all nuts and bolts, and I think that there is an element of truth to that. You know, for even with this liquid heat generator, like, oh man, I don't know if I can install that. Sure, you can. You know, if if you've if you've installed an alternator, you can install this product. It's just not that complicated. But just to be able to see somebody's dream and be part of that and say. You know, and build build the, the zeal in their eyes to say, "I hey, man, I did that." That is an incredibly rewarding thing. And uh, you know, we've helped. I don't even know how many shops get started. Um, the uh, just because you know, guys were doing it out of their garage, and it's like, "Hey, man, you're you know, you're Joe, you're calling me again." It's like this is more than just a single truck we're working on here. Oh well, yeah, I'm working on my buddies. Like, you call me a lot for your buddies. How many buddies <laughs> do you have exactly? <laughs> Uh, a couple hundred. Holy <laughs> crap, man. You're working on a couple hundred trucks. Why are you not a shop? Well, I got the job and they got the 401k and they got a, it's like, oh man, do you know how amazing the world could be when it's your own gig and you can help so many people and you can, you can offer a better service at less money for people. And, you know, I had one of my customers years ago is so incredible. They wrote me a little thank you note on the back of our little intake form. says, you know, something along the lines of, uh, your value, price, quality, service allowed me to keep food on the family, food on the table for my family. I'm like, ah, uh, you know, that's, that's that's what it's about, man. If we can't help each other out, what 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 good are we? So it's uh, it's it's fun, and it's and it's fun to see people brag about, oh yeah, I installed your Fickham tune, and you know, and and uh, I'm I'm getting another couple miles to the gallon out of my truck, or I I, I put that four inch exhaust, and man, you're right, uh, three and a half inch to four inch exhaust, but I never realized it's twenty five percent more airflow. Pi R squared, Miss uh, Miss Smith, in, in middle school, she she was right, hundred <laughs> percent, man, you know. And people don't realize that it just comes down to simple physics and diesels they like to breathe, and and uh, you feed them what they want, and they'll be very 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 happy with you. But uh, in, in so many of our conversations with our customers, I equate it, I equate so much of our troubleshooting. Because part of what we get, when you, if you call us up, uh, uh, tech support from us is always free. Always. We never charge for that. And, you know, we'll spend just as much time trying to talk somebody out of something as trying to talk them into something. Um, and, you know, and we give credit where credit's due. If we've got a vendor that makes an awesome X, but their, their Y isn't so awesome, we'll tell them that. We'll say, hey, well, you know, yeah, uh, you know, buy this from them, but this other one, yeah, you know, they're, they're still working on some bugs. So go ahead and let's go with this other solution. And so we're vendor agnostic when it comes to that stuff. And it's just, it's so amazing and so rewarding to just meet people where they are, help them through the challenge that they're having, help them see a larger world, help them realize the reasons why, you know, schools, 
they teach facts. That's great, but you, know, you can memorize all that stuff. If you can show somebody the reason why, and it's like, hey, the reason why you retorque your freaking lugs after 30 miles on aluminum rims, there's a there's a reason for that. And if you don't do it, it's going to end badly for you. I don't want that, right? And people say, oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. And torque specs matter and all this kind of stuff. And what affects torque specs? And oh, my goodness. <laughs> so it's just there is a tremendous amount to know. And so many people, they, uh, they're so busy with their lives. They're so busy, you know, putting food on the table for their family and everything else. And, and as a result, what's happened is, and, and not, not to go all on, go all out on theory with you, but people are used to getting shafted essentially. And it's like, that's a travesty. Um, you know, be the good that you want to see in the world. It's not that big of a deal, but to be able to throw a tune on a diesel and be able to, to have all that extra oomph, all that extra power, you're pulling that, you're pulling that mountain in 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 uh, Colorado, and you're not getting passed by the Nissan next to you. That's a pretty nice feeling, you know. And so, uh, just to be part of that, I mean, be part of making stuff last longer, you know, and saying, hey, you don't need to get a new one of these things. You can put a bypass oil filtration system on here. You can, you can, uh, you know, put put better air filtration on here. You can throw uh, throw a bigger turbo on this thing, bigger injectors. But let's not have you do that if you're not willing to spend the money on a transmission right now, you know. Uh, so all these things they work together for good. And so um, I guess a, that's a very long way of saying I love people, and I'm a tech guy. Um, and, uh, and so I'm a car guy, a tech guy and a people guy, all in one guy. It's a very sad story. <laughs> <laughs> the part of that, that I really strongly identify with is the helping people portion. <clears throat> I had a conversation once, um, it was with a family member and, uh, not some one I'm particularly really close to or see a lot, but they, you know, you, you meet up at the holidays and <clears throat> you catch up and they say, Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing for work? All that kind of stuff. And, and I'm trying to explain like, you know, working in media or being a podcast host and my passion for trucks. And they said, well, I thought you loved to help people. Like it's, I think of automotive, I think of it very technical. I think of it very X, Y, Z, very informational. And th th it was hard to explain to them, but I think we're going to both identify with it is one of the things that's most personal, personal to people is their vehicle. They use it every day. It's, they don't know how they use it. It might just be to go point A to point B. It might be to provide for their family. It might be to keep food on the table. It might be to pay the mortgage, the rent, whatever it is. So it's very, very personal to people. And so I always identified being able to help somebody with information or pointing them in a certain direction. It's incredibly rewarding because I'm able to impact positively something that somebody uses every day. So whether it's a technical question or... You know, sometimes a younger person will, will message in and say, hey, I'm just out of high school, just out of college. I love trucks. I want to work on them. You know, my family tells me, hey, I need to go get this degree and do that. But this is where my passion is. Well, let me do an episode about it. Let me talk to somebody who's done it. And it's that impact. So it's really cool to hear how that's impacted you and, and formulated your, your businesses and how you approach it. So it's one of the things that historically I've always found in automotive. I didn't find, I didn't really find the humans, the human side of it, the human story of it, because I mean, it's very technical. It's very competitive. We want to know, you know, CFM, ETs, horsepower, torque, all that stuff, but sure. there's so much more behind it. So that, that side of, uh, of what you mentioned, that, that really, that really hit home for me. Well, absolutely, and and recognize that while while there are a, a a relative ton of guys who are like, man, they want the horsepower upgrades, they want they they want all of that. There's so many more that just like, look, I just want my truck to work. I'm happy with the stock power levels. How can I make this thing last longer? How can I make it reliable? I mean, yeah. you know, we got started a second repair, and you know, Power Stroke Six O has a horrible reputation. Um, created by guys that don't understand the concept of maintenance, primarily, I would say, you know, if you go ahead and turn this thing up to a thousand horsepower, don't be surprised when something breaks. I mean, right? That 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 happens. And so just just realize, you know, you talk about these 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 young kids that they're they're calling in and they're like, oh man, yeah, I, you know, I hooked up this this uh this, this, this crazy huge treader at the back of my truck and it's, it's pulling it. Yeah. It's squatting in the back, but it's pulling it. And isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is amazing. But if you thought about the fact that you don't have as much weight on your front axle anymore, 
Have you thought about the fact that if Jimmy runs her out in front of you, you're not going to be able to steer because you lost steering control so you don't have adequate traction? Can I sell you a solution for that or convince you not to not to hook up that huge, crazy uh, trailer anymore uh, because it's just not safe? And so at some point, the conversation becomes safety. I want to be safe. I want to, I want to put my wife in my truck and not have to worry about, is she going to make it home, right? Uh, I want to put, put mom in there and not have to worry about when she's hooking up a, a horse trailer or whatever. Um, you know, I don't want to have to worry about it. And we have enough to worry about as it is without having vehicles that don't work properly. And so if the aftermarket can come in and the aftermarket has done a magnificent job, I just got uh, th through with the we were at SEMA th this year and that's an amazing, an amazing experience of all these incredibly gifted minds coming together for a solution. And the fact that they get to make money doing it, <sighs> sweet <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's it's quite fun and very 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 impressive and this latest product you know this liquid heat generator it's just another it's like oh my god you know why didn't i think of that kind of thing it's so obvious if you're a diesel owner you want this period it's just that awesome and uh you know so many guys are they're, they're, they're used to their own paradigms of well this is just the way that it is my life is just this way well you know you're, we're a product of our choices and so if you don't like your life, make different choices and you start seeing the, start seeing the, 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 the fruits of that come in, install this product and you'll have, you'll have, uh, you'll have warm tootsies, right? <laughs> or install the, in, you know, uh, road active suspension is the product that we tell people about all the time, not to do another product plug, but just to say, Hey, you don't necessarily need the airbags. You don't necessarily need to add another leaf. Uh, you can, you can go ahead and maintain your, maintain your, uh, your relationship with your chiropractor is just the buddy down the street instead of the guy that you're seeing every day. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to stiffen up your ride to be able to tow that thing all the time. And there, there's solutions, there's options for this, but people just don't know. Uh, the official people called they, I don't know who these they people are, but holy sweet Jesus, they need to stop talking. Uh, they say that ignorance is bliss. No, ignorance is expensive. And so if we, can, if we can lessen that financial load for somebody, that's what we want to do. So we haven't been beat on price in, I don't even know, 13 years-ish. We price match for 30 days after the sale. Uh, we rep for essentially everybody. Our goal, um, you know, is is to be like the one stop shop for all things all things diesel, which is actually why we're migrating away from thick and repair. People don't think of thick and repair when they think of lift kits or they think of turbos or they think of uh, front end components. Uh, uh, injectors, whatever, but they might think of USA Diesel. So we're rolling out usadiesel.com. And um, currently, if somebody somebody goes there, it'll take you to a product page for this liquid heat generator on Thick and Repair. But don't be surprised when not too long from now, we will roll out that that new web presence and um, it'll have all of the gajillion products that that that, that we sell offered on it. Um, but know that if, if, if you're looking for something special, you're looking for a particular solution, uh, call. Talk, talk to one of our guys, uh, guys, anyone that answers is more than qualified to talk with you. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just help you as the, as the neighbor that you are to us, as the, as the friend that we don't know yet. And uh, it's it's not that difficult to do the right thing. I, I tell people all the time, if, if you can't do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I mean, number one, I feel sorry for you. I'm going to pray for you a little bit. But the but if you can't do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, do the right thing because it's good business. People don't want to be sold. People want to be loved on. They want to be appreciated. They want to be helped. And so why can't we do that for people? It's just not that complicated. And so for all your guys that are listening to this and they're they're actively turning wrenches or or, or whatever, thinking that their that their life is just as it is, um, they can absolutely be be everything that they want to be, uh, whether that's in mechanics or something else. So um, that vision is there for them. It's just a matter of of them seizing out and and, and reaching for it. I think what's been so incredible watching the diesel industry from, gosh, I think I really started to pay attention maybe in 2006 or seven. And it started with a diesel magazine. And then I would go to different forums and things like that to where it is in 2023 is how much opportunity is there um, on so many different levels. Uh, this would probably be a whole podcast episode by itself, but <laughs> you know, sure. I, I think the emission side of things really forced companies and engineers and, and 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 people to think okay how do we infuse some of the reliability some of the things that the older trucks had into these newer trucks and then it's progressed to this point where a lot of the things that are coming out for new trucks they're being retroactively 
working on a 5.9 or an LB7. I'm sure you hear with all the companies you work with, tons of different stories, tons of things they're doing, and it's really exciting. So, you know, <clears throat> just because someone like I'm not, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not that mechanical, but there was a spot for me in this industry to talk with people who are, or to hear stories or to learn about new products or, I'm sure when I'm going to ask you some six liter questions here before we wrap up is <laughs> Go ahead. be able to, to find that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what inspires me and has me, you know, really excited about it. And, uh, I really appreciate what you guys are doing and, and the approach that you take. It's very unique and it's, it's something I think the industry needs more of. And I think it benefits not only the customer, the people who call you, maybe they don't even order anything. Maybe you just help them and save them money. Right. But also 100%. somebody somebody out there that's thinking, you know, I'm not happy in my job or I'm not happy doing what I'm doing. My passion is really this this, this truck stuff. This is what I love. I love Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, whichever one it might be, or maybe all of them. Yeah. There, there's something there for you. Well, there there really is, and it you know it's so it's so nice to be a springboard for people. I can tell you, I mean, a significant number of times where someone's gone on to greener pastures that that's worked for me, and I'll get a text from them or a phone call from them years later, uh, just thanking me, saying, "Hey, because you were so passionate about this, that allowed me to do this other thing, and my, my life is just better." And like, wow, and it's just like. Huh? You know, that makes that 1% of people that you're tempted to, to let it ruin your whole day. You know, pe people say, well, you know, oh, he, you know, he made me feel badly. No, he did not. You chose to feel badly as a result of his actions. Own it. Take ownership of your own of your own choices, your own your own life paths, and recognize that with these trucks, when the knee bone is connected to the hip bone, so very seriously. Like you talk about a Power Stroke 6.0, and people call us up all the time saying, "Hey, man, I'm having a turbo underboost code. Can you sell me a turbo?" It's like your turbo underboost code is probably because you're not you don't have a, a you have an exhaust leak. <laughs> you know, uh, can, we, can we check for an exhaust leak before I sell you a turbo? You yeah. know, or or maybe your thickum isn't working right because that'll cause a turbo under boost code as well. And you know, if you need a turbo, brother, we'll sell you a turbo. But if if let's let's hook you up with what you need, not with what you think you need. And then you know, if say to you, say it is a turbo, and you're like, okay, fine. So you need a turbo. Okay, do you want to go back with stock or do you want something a little a little a little nicer, right? And uh, what what's that what's that forward plan look like? And let's map this out so you're not throwing away money now by buying something that's only going to last you for the next six months, and then you're buying something else from us. I mean, we got videos on our YouTube channel, just pick and repair on YouTube, um, and there's like 80 videos out there, but. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, like there's one on injector sizing and it says, hey, so you need injectors. Now what size? It's like, well, have you thought about the fact that if you if you put on like 205.30s, like, I'll never use it. I'll never run 205. I don't need something that big. I, I, sell me some 155 30s. Well, okay, we'll sell you the 155 30s. If that's what you really want, just recognize that you're pigeonholed. Uh, you can take your 205 30s that you're going to spend like 150 bucks more for for the set of eight. And you can tune them down to work just like a 155.30 for all intents and purposes. And that way I only have to sell you a set of injectors once ever. And isn't that better? Yeah, yeah. that's better. And But hey, if you don't want to do that, I'm going to sell you some 155s, man, brother. I will I'll line up right behind you, support you all the way, and uh, get you the, the 155s that you asked for. But at least now you have this extra information. At least now you can make a better informed choice. Uh, it's kind of like right now, if somebody goes on our website and they they order something. Uh, people are always surprised. They're like, yeah, I had somebody call me. Uh, yeah, we call uh, pretty much everybody back who, who places an order. And it's absolutely amazing what per we modify about 80% of our orders. So an order comes in, they, they order a turbo, they order exhaust manifolds, they order you know injectors or whatever. And 80% of the time, we end up modifying that order, which a significant percentage of the time actually get involves getting rid of what they was in their shopping cart to begin with. Like, brother, you didn't even need that. Instead of instead of uh, spending thousands of dollars on what you thought you need, how about if you spend hundreds of dollars on what you actually need? And they're like, oh, holy buckets! You know, I had a guy that um, the uh, he called me up. This is some years ago. It's just a great a great deal. Uh, you know. Uh, I called up. I answered the phone. You know, thank you for calling. Take a repair. This is Ed. How can I help you? And he says, "Thank God." I'm like, uh oh, 
this can't be good. <laughs> Why are you thanking God for talking with me? <laughs> well, I understand that you're the 6-0 guy. And you can, if, if anyone can help me, you can. I said, like, man, I don't know. That's a lot of pressure, but I'll, I'll do what I can. You know, what do you got? So he goes to this whole story. He says, I'm down to my last $5,000. Uh, my truck's been to three different shops over nine months. Nobody can fix my problem. And I'm hoping you can. I said, I, he says, you can have every bit of the 5000 I just want to, I just need my truck back. I, I bet desperately. I'm like, okay. Tell me your story. So I spent an hour and a half on the phone with this guy. And uh, hour and a half in, I'm like, okay, I know enough. He's like, what, you can't help me? I said, no, I know exactly what your problem is. I said, but I feel badly telling you. And he says, what do you mean? I said, your problem is a freaking relay. Your entire problem is a freaking relay. I said, I can sell you the relay and I'm going to be cheaper than Ford is. I know I am, but if your Ford dealership's right down the street and I'm not. In fact, I'm so sure that it's the relay, that if it's not the relay, you send me a copy of your receipt and I'll pay for your freaking relay. It's the relay. Go buy the relay. I said, just ask, you know, I'd, I'd love to know how this turns out for you. Just call me back and let me know. He says, why are you doing this? He says, you could have sold me all kinds of stuff and include the relay in there and I would have never known the difference. I said, yeah, that's, that's accurate, but I would have known. So he called me, he called me up it's like three hours later, my phone, phone rings to see a caller ID, you know, the same, same number. I picked it up and I was like, ah, I hear a diesel running in the background. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, what do I owe you? I said, ah, you're at Corona. It's good. I never got my Corona, but uh, that's okay. But it was, it was just so fun. Just so fun to, to, to bless somebody that way. Yeah. And um, that's the kind of stuff that we do. And that's, I'm, I'm so on fire for this liquid heat generator project. I, I hate to come back to that again, but I mean, guys, I hope that I hope your listeners hear the passion and the drive and the love for people. So I love the technology. I love my stuff to work. You know, I'm 52 years old. I'm at a point where I just want my stuff to work, you know, and uh, and I and I don't want to go in there again. I want to fix it once and be done. And so any of your any of your uh, I said customers, but any, any of your any of your listeners who are who are looking for a way forward that they don't want to give up the the, the the crazy torque and the crazy power and the fuel economy that comes with it and everything else in their diesel and they and but they're also sick of freezing and they're also sick of having this this thing looming over their head about about this you know five to seven whatever it is thousand dollars for after replacements or if they're just like man i'm tired of my truck going into regen all the time i'm tired of it going into limp mode i'm tired of it of me not my use of this truck I don't, it doesn't even get hot enough that goes into regen i have to put it in manual regen and what a pain yeah you don't have to do any of that anymore just buy this product and move on i know it's not free i get that but it will pay for itself i am firmly confident and if your application is slightly different, you know, and, and you're like, well, do I need this application or that application? Hey, call us. We'll talk with you about it. Maybe maybe it's not for you. And that and that's okay too, right? But um, if there's one thing that we want to leave everybody with is just this concept of, hey, there's somebody out there that's not looking to gouge you. You know, we're just looking to take care of you. And uh, the companies that we choose to align ourselves with, uh, they're very well vetted. And we are incredibly confident in, in their product offerings. Otherwise, we wouldn't offer them. And that's just, that's just where it's at. That's such a huge deal. Like this is complete coincidence. But uh, I was up early this morning and I went to order something. This doesn't have to do with automotive at all. And I went to check out. I made sure everything was right. Address, billing, shipping. You know, does the autofill credit card thing? Doesn't yep. work. I'm like, uh -huh. I know I have the money for it. Go do it again. Doesn't work. And I thought, okay, maybe it's just something. I'll, I'll wait till later. I get an email from them. They're two hours ahead of me. They say, hey, there was an issue with our website. Sorry it didn't work. You can check out now. Here's a link right to the product. And I thought, automotive needs more of this. Like, this was just a technical error on a website that was going on. These people were proactive. It wasn't a lot of money, but they were proactive, reached out, and did it. And so in my mind, whenever I want something else, I'm going back to that place. Because that person took the time, <laughs> the 30 seconds, to send me an email. And yep. I think what you're talking about with with helping people is it's, it sticks out in our mind of, of uh, if I need something, I know where I'm going back to. And I think that kind of leads into, cause I, I can't have you on the podcast and not ask a six liter question because we get these so much and people who own them Pressure's are so on. passionate. They're so <laughs> passionate and they say, do another six liter episode. I'm like, okay, we got you. <clears throat> but I think of somebody who's, doesn't own one and they're new and they're looking out there and that's the truck that fits what they want, what they need, what they, however they're going to use the truck. 
Sure. And I know just asking you to pick three things is tough because there might be more with any truck that's out there. But what are three things that somebody who just buys a six liter should look at doing for reliability? Not necessarily power or torque or, you know, any of that stuff, but just what should they look to like three things to make that truck more reliable? I would say the number one thing, and this stands uh, just head and shoulders above every other option that's out there is a recognition that the factory gauges are borderline worthless. Um, so like, have you ever noticed that your transmission fluid temperature gauge is always dead set in the middle of perfect? Yeah. I mean, that's either the best heat exchanger known to man or it's lying to you. You know, what are the options here, right? And the same thing with your low pressure oil. You know, uh, it's dead set in the middle of perfect and you realize, huh, that low pressure oil, that's a seven PSI switch. It's just on off. It should have been an idiot light. Yeah, but it didn't look cool. And so the marketing people got a hold of it and said, let's put a gauge there. Woohoo, right? But if you get gauges, if you get uh so my, my favorite favorite gauges from Edge products, the Edge Insight CTS3, that's another reason to go you know that God loves you and wants you to be happy. Um, that is going to give you uh insight, no pun intended, ha, huh, uh, into what's going on under the hood of the truck. I mean, you can monitor everything in this free freaking dog, uh, what, 12 things at once or some such, and it'll beep at you when bad things are happening, so you don't even have to notice. And then it supports the addition of auxiliary gauges. So if you do add power and you want to know what your exhaust gas temperatures are, you want to know what your what your fuel pressure is, the number one killer of fuel injectors is a loss of fuel pressure. And there, there is no fuel pressure sensor from Ford on this truck. So don't you want to buy Edge's, what they call their competition kit. I don't know who comes up with these names. But you buy their competition kit, uh, you tack it on to the Edge uh, Insight CTS-3. And yeah, you can buy this stuff from anybody, but um, Edge you know, has 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 uh, minimum advertised pricing. So everybody is the same same exact price. But I'd love it if you buy it from me, by all means, of course. But uh, but buy it from somebody. And and that way, you're, you're, you've got full monitoring, full introspection on my excursion that we talked about a few minutes ago. My alternator was failing, which by the way, dead alternators are super high on, on the list of why FICMs fail. So if you don't want to be my customer for the FICM, get a bigger alternator. We can hook you up. Watch my alternator videos on that. And there's a 20 minute conversation about why, why alternators are too small and a parts for a 6L, but they're, they're too small. I don't, care, I don't care if you live in Miami, they're too small. If you live in Fargo, oh my God, they're too small. But, but, the, um, but gauges is a very, very, very big thing. It'll give you early indication of problems. It'll allow you to trust your truck to take it across the country without having to think about it. Now, from a longevity perspective, also, this, this is the second thing, is uh, there's a transmission upgrade. Most of these trucks are 5R110 transmissions or automatics, uh, but that truck does not upshift through fourth gear. It shifts one, two, three, five, six. Uh, in super cold temperatures, it shifts one, two, three, four, five. But in the vast majority of cases, it shifts one, two, three, five. Six and so really super high on the list of things that cause a five R one ten to 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 bite the dust is the clutch pack that handles that shift wears out and it's not the two hundred dollars for the clutch pack it's that you got to drop the tranny to to replace it that sucks why not drop the pan and change out two two solenoids so we've got an electronic pressure control solenoid and a direct drive solenoid you change those two puppies out and i got a video of that there's a right on my homepage at pick and repair actually pick and repair.com and you can watch the 20 minute um, video but i'm talking about all the reasons why it's awesome but you're going to double your line pressure and quadruple the flow of tranny fluid that you've got going to that clutch and the number one way that you know this is happening that you're about to have this problem um is uh, actually, you put it in reverse and it takes a second to engage and you're like, uh oh, that's not good. Yeah, you're 100 percent. That's not good. Or you're getting on the expressway in the morning and it's like somebody put your truck in neutral for a second. You're like, what happened there? Oh, that was just a one off. But then it does it again on the way home and you're like, oh, crap. And so people find this out, they put the solenoids in and nine out of 10 times, it gives them another maybe 30,000 miles. But, you know, I tell people like, when's the best time to plant a tree? Uh, that'd be 30 years ago. When's the next best time? Today seems good, you know? <laughs> so the uh, let's go ahead and get those solenoids installed. And while you're at it, realize that in the 6.0, the 5R110, that's the same tranny made into a 6.4. Huh. But in the 6.4, they have a differently configured pan. People call it a deeper pan. It's not actually deeper. It's just differently configured. It supports a filter. The 6.4 guys, it supports a pleated filter that filters at 15 microns. The filter that's in your Power Stroke 6.0's tranny filters at 149 microns. Brother, if a 149 micron filter makes the difference for you, 
you needed a transmission a long time ago just anyway. Yeah. Right. So let's go ahead and get 10 times better fluid filtration as long as we're taking this thing apart anyway. And let's go ahead and um, and prevent that clutch pack from ever failing. And um, and then life is life is truly good. And the third thing, and I've already mentioned that actually I kind of cheated. Maybe we're at four now. If you want to do the competition, get a call that one. I don't know. But the um, if you don't want to be stranded, if you've got more than 160,000 miles on either your starter or alternator, consider replacing them. Uh, I've yet to see a six in in one case ever actually a six o starter has given me warning. So in the morning you wake up, turn the key, you know, you know, you know, in the afternoon, you know, boom. Next morning, turn the key, boom. Afternoon, turn the key, not even a click. It's just dead. It's just like what happened? It didn't. didn't no warning. Yeah, and it's not going to happen on a seventy-two degree day and a Saturday when you got nothing going on. You know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen when you're in a hurry and you're 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 stranded someplace. You're at the ball game or whatever. That's when it's going to happen. So change this puppy out and and uh, and then just just move on. And there's a whole video on that too. There's upgrades. So that's at least some. I could go on for for quite a while. <laughs> <you probably heard. laughs> those are some good tips. I haven't heard those before. So I think that's uh, that, that's a lot of a lot of good stuff. I know there's going to be questions that our listeners had that I didn't ask you. <clears throat> and um, for those who are listening on podcast apps, they're not going to see uh, the phone number behind you and, and that. But what is the best way to contact you guys? Ask a question. Talk about a build. Uh, maybe ask you a question from the podcast. Something like that. Absolutely, lots of ways to get hold of us. If if uh, if you want to hop us, uh, grab us on Instagram. We're at USA Diesel on Instagram, uh, Facebook. We're USA Diesel on Facebook. If you want to go on YouTube, not to confuse people, but we're Fickham Repair on YouTube, so our legacy brand is still standing out there. Or you go to FickhamRepair.com. There's a chat function right there. You can talk with one of our techs that way, or you can call us five one five eight nine seven four four five nine, and uh, you know we're around uh, well most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and uh, yeah, your, your listeners, I'll, I'll just throw a little carrot out there. There's a really fun, a really, really, truly, I enjoyed recording it. It's fun. If you're on hold, if you don't get us right away and you listen to the little on hold music, it, it cuts in about 30 seconds in with just a, just a little, a little piece of levity to just brighten your day. It's, <laughs> it, it's worth the call, just if nothing else to hear that. So uh, but yeah, the 515-897-4459 number, I would tell you that that's probably arguably the best way because only through conversations are enough hints laid forward that uh, that really allow us to to really put all the dots and connect them to each other for to get somebody a cohesive solution because that's what it's about i mean we had a guy that uh called us just in the last couple of days actually he's like hey my truck saying i'm at 178 coolant and 187 oil do i need an oil cooler uh brother you need a thermostat <laughs> You know, it's, it's 192 degree thermostat from Ford. You're at 178. Yeah, your deltas between oil and coolant are okay, but you need a thermostat. And oh, by the way, Mishimoto's thermostat to 200 degree thermostat. It's way the way the heck better. And so buy that and move on. And and oh, by the way, you want to put silicone hoses in at the same time and all this kind of stuff. You can do that. And that, that ended up in a whole conversation that nothing to do with an oil cooler at all. But it was just through some extra little hints that he gave, it became clear to us that there was more going on than what he was originally alluding to. And so I would say that through the conversation, and isn't it sad that we've turned into this society where we just hop on Amazon and, or, you know, what their e-commerce site and, you know, you, you buy something and they ship it to you and that's it, but they're not checking to see if you got the right stuff. And, and, and so it's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a thousand percent cheaper if something is possible than that. I, you're, you're not having to buy the, the wrong thing and all the, all the hassle and everything else. If yeah. you buy something from us, it's going to work for you. So that's the story. It was really cool to chat with you today. I had a blast on this podcast and there's, I probably could keep you for three or four hours going through different topics, but I know you're a busy, <laughs> a busy guy, <laughs> um, but I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate you, <laughs> appreciate you sharing the, the knowledge, answering the questions and then. Talking about a product I think is really important. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, one of the main issues that I would personally have with buying a, a newer truck was, I know if I work it hard, it's going to work well. I love the technology. I love the styling. I love the transmissions that are in them. I love the payload. I love the towing capacity. But how do I address my idle time? How do I address getting up to temperature? So I love, yep. I love what this does. So uh, again, I appreciate your time today chatting with us, and I look forward to chatting with you more in the future there's a ton of different topics i'm gonna make some notes after this one so um <laughs> i can uh, i can uh, get on another podcast with you 
Well, very good. And if your listeners do have questions, please don't be a stranger. Uh, d- d- drop us a note even to, uh, you know, sales at FICMrepair.com is another way to get us and we can we can start the conversation. Anything that involves helping people, sign us up. We're in. Don't forget, Diesel fans, make sure and head on over to Kershaw.kaiusa.com. Use code 2024-DIESEL40 for 40% off MSRP. They've got a ton of different knives to meet a whole different host of uses you might have, whether it's EDC, hunting, fishing, something around the job site at work, even around the house. They've got a ton of different choices for blade shape, handle design, different blade lengths, and also different types of steel that you can get. So we appreciate them offering that discount code just for Diesel Podcast listeners. I also want to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters. Tyler Lowen at 23 Diesel, J. Cole John, all of our other Patreon supporters, all of you who subscribe on YouTube podcast apps, follow us on social media. We appreciate all your support here in year eight of the Diesel Podcast and look forward to bringing you more of the content that you want to hear in 2024. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.